This is a public hearing of the New York City uh, Rent Guidelines Board. This is the second of four hearings to consider comments concerning proposed rent adjustments for renewal leases for apartments, lofts, hotels, and other housing units that are subject to the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969 and the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974. These adjustments will affect renewal leases commencing between October 1, 2019 through September 30th, 2020. I will take roll call now. Please respond if present. Shayla Garcia. Leah Goodridge. Present. Cecilia Hossa. Present. Alex Schwartz. Present. Patty Stone. Present. Herman Tejeda. Scott Walsh. Present. Nay Yu. Present. David Reese, present. Let the record show we have a quorum. The next meeting of this board will be a public hearing on June 18. In all, there will be two more public hearings to comment on the proposed guidelines. They will be held at, on the following dates, times, and locations. Tuesday, June 18th, Jamaica Performing Arts Center Auditorium at 153-10 Jamaica Avenue in Jamaica, New York. And that will be from 5.30 to 8.30. And interpretation will be available in Spanish. And this lo location is wheelchair accessible. Uh, the final hearing will be Thursday, June 20th, 2019 at the Oberia D. Dempsey Multi-Service Center Auditorium at 127 West 127th Street. That will be from 5 to 8 p.m. Interpretation will be available in Spanish and it will be a wheelchair accessible location. Directions to these hearings are posted on our website, nyc.gov slash RGB. Pre-registration to speak at these hearings has begun. You can sign up by calling the Rent Guidelines Board offices at 212-669-7480, then press zero to register. For further information, see our website. And as always, there are copies of our meeting schedule here tonight. The final vote will take place on June 25th, starting at 7 p.m. It will be held in the Great Hall at Cooper Union, 7 East 7th Street in Manhattan. If you're interested in receiving email updates about upcoming RGB meetings and hearings, please take one of our flyers that are here today, or you can sign up by going to the board's homepage at nyc.gov slash RGB. Feel free to ask members of the staff at the registration desk to help you sign up for these email updates. I'd like to thank you all for attending this public hearing. The board is looking forward to hearing from many of you regarding the proposed rent adjustment guidelines. Based upon the testimony we have heard in previous years, we know that many of you here have concerns about housing conditions and various aspects of rent regulation that may be beyond the mandate of this board. In order to help address these concerns, representatives from New York State Homes and Community Renewal are available to answer questions and provide advice. They are located in the lobby. The board very much appreciates their willingness to participate in these hearings. Before we proceed with the testimony, I would like to go over the rules and procedures for those who are testifying before the board. If you wish to speak, you must confirm your presence with the RGB staff at the registration table located near the entrance of the hall. Speakers will not be called if they have not checked in at the registration table. There is a Spanish interpreter here today. When registering to speak, please notify the staff if you would like an interpreter. I will try to call several names in advance. When your name is called, please come to the front of the auditorium so we can have a kind of an efficient um, use of our time uh, because we may have a long night and, and to help everyone speak uh, in a reasonable amount of time. I will attempt to alternate speakers between tenants and owners, but this may not always be possible. In order to accommodate as many speakers as possible, each speaker will have two minutes to give their testimony. An additional two minutes of speaking time will be given to those speakers utilizing interpretation services. To help speakers keep track of their time, we have a clock. The clock is right over there. Um, we will start the clock when you begin speaking. The clock will be beep once when the speaker has 30 seconds left. We'll continue beeping when the allotted two minutes are up. If you're still speaking at the end of the two minutes, I will ask you to quickly wrap up your testimony uh, so that we can hear from uh, our neighbors um, and, and uh, others. We expect many speakers and the board wants to hear from as many speakers as possible in the limited time we have for this hearing. We understand that it may be difficult to say everything you want us to hear in just two minutes, but please understand that it is our responsibility to make sure that everyone who has taken the time to come here and testify will have a fair opportunity to be heard. We thank you for your cooperation. Um, and um, our interpreter uh, will translate my remarks uh, into Spanish. Thank you. 
me gustaría darles la bienvenida a esta audiencia pública del Comité para Regulaciones de la Renta de la Ciudad de Nueva York. Esta es la primera de las cuatro audiencias públicas para considerar los comentarios sobre los ajustes de alquiler propuestos para los arrendamientos de renovación de apartamentos, lofts, hoteles y otras unidades de vivienda sujeto a la Ley de Estabilización de Alquiler de 1969 y la Ley de Protección de Inquilinos de Emergencia del 1974. Cuatro. Estos ajustes afectarán a los arrendamientos de renovación, arrendamientos que comienzan entre el primero de octubre de 2019 y al 30 de septiembre de 2020. La próxima reunión de esta junta será una audiencia pública el 18 de junio. En total habrá dos audiencias públicas más para comentar las directrices propuestas eh, se llevarán a cabo en las siguientes fechas, horarios y lugares. Martes 18 de junio una audiencia pública en Jamaica Performing Arts Center en el auditorio de la 153-10 uh, Avenida Jamaica en Jamaica, Nueva York. Eh, de 5 y media a 8 y media pm habrá eh, interpretación al español disponible. Eh, jueves 20 de junio 2019, una audiencia pública en Overia Dempsey Multi Service Center en el auditorio en la 127 en la calle oeste de las en la, 120, en la oeste calle 127 eh, de 8 de 5 a 8 pm también habrá interpretación disponible al español las direcciones a estas audiencias se pueden encontrar en un sitio de red de, in, de la ny.gov eh, rgb la preinscripción para hablar en estas audiencias ha comenzado. Puede inscribirse llamando a las oficinas del Rent Guidelines Board al 212-669-7480. Luego presione el 0 para, para registrarse. Para más información, consulte nuestro sitio de red. Y como siempre, hay copias de nuestro horario de reunión aquí esta noche. La, notación, la votación final se llevará a cabo el 25 de junio a partir de las 7 p.m. Se llevará a cabo en el Gran Salón de Cooper Union, 7 este de la séptima calle en Manhattan. Si está interesado en... El, en recibir actualizaciones por correo electrónico sobre las próximas reuniones y audiencias del RGB, tome uno de estos folletos que están aquí hoy o puede inscribirse en la nueva página de inicio de la Junta en la nyc.govrgb. No duden en preguntar a los miembros del personal de la mesa del registro para que le ayuden a inscribirse para recibir estas actualizaciones por correo electrónico. Me gustaría agradecerles a todos por asistir a esta audiencia pública. La Junta espera con interés recibir noticias de muchos de ustedes sobre las pautas de ajuste de renta pro propuestas. Con base en el testimonio que hemos escuchado en años anteriores, sabemos que muchos de ustedes aquí tienen inquietudes sobre lo, las condiciones de vivienda y diversos aspectos de la regulación de alquiler que pueden estar más allá del mandato de esta junta. Para ayudar a abordar estas inquietudes, lo, los representantes de NYS Homes and Community Renewal están re disponibles para responder preguntas y brindar asesoramiento. Están ubicados en el vestíbulo. La Junta aprecia mucho su voluntad de participar en estas audiencias. Antes de proceder con el testimonio, me gustaría repasar las reglas y procedimientos para los que están testificando ante la Junta. Si desea hablar, debe confirmar su presencia con el personal de RGB en la mesa de registro ubicada cerca de la entrada de la sala. No se llamará a los oradores si no se han inscrito en la mesa de registro. Um, habrán dos intérpretes en español aquí hoy. Cuando se inscriba para hablar, notifique al personal si desea intérprete. Intentaré llamar a varios nombres por adelanto. Cuando su nombre sea llamado, por favor, venga al frente del auditorio. Si tiene materiales para distribuir a la Junta, debe entregarlos al personal de RGB que se encuentran en la mesa de registro acerca de la entrada. Intenta Alter, alternar oradores entre inquilinos y propietarios para esto no pero esto no siempre será posible con el fin de dar 
cabida, eh, tiempo pa, a todos los oradores como sea disponible. Cada orador tendrá dos minutos para dar su testimonio. Se darán dos minutos adicionales de tiempo para hablar a los oradores que utilicen los servicios de interpretación. Para ayudar a los oradores a hacer un seguimiento de su tiempo, tenemos un reloj. Comenzaremos el reloj cuando empieces a hablar. El reloj emitirá un pitido una vez cuando el altavoz disponga de 30 segundos. Continuará sonando cuando hayan transcurrido los dos minutos asignados. Si todavía están hablando al cabo de dos minutos, le pediré que concluya rápidamente su testimonio. Esperamos que haya muchos oradores y que la Junta quiera escuchar a tantos oradores como sea posible en el tiempo limitado que tenemos para esta audiencia. Entendemos que puede ser difícil decir todo lo que quiere que escuchemos en solo dos minutos, pero comprenda que es nuestra responsabilidad asegurarnos de que todos los que se tomaron el tiempo para venir aquí y testificar tengan una oportunidad justa de ser escuchados. Les damos las gracias por su cooperación. Gracias. Um, let me read out uh, the people that I have registered now, and uh, you can have a sense of when you're going to speak. Um, and let me first invite up uh, Dino Panagulias. Um, uh, Dino will be our first speaker. And then after that, I have Clara Perez-Joseph, Fred Fumafredo, Alan Podheiser, Thomas Casper, and Dennis Riddle. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Panagulias, welcome. Hi. Good evening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address the board. I'd like to tell you about myself and my family. My name is Dino Panagoulias, and I'm the proud son of two Greek parents who immigrated to this country from Greece in 1970. Spoke not one word of English, saved money, and bought a building in Queens. Over the last 10 years, we've seen the Dutch Kills neighborhood in Queens change from what was considered a disadvantaged neighborhood to one that many New Yorkers now find desirable. Hotels and luxury buildings are popping up virtually on every corner. Previous mayoral administrations have allowed this to happen through various rezonings and variances. There was no mention of affordable housing requirements in these rezonings, and so none were built. Our building was built in 1930, making it 89 years old. Since 2016, we've seen our property taxes increase by 30%. 30 percent. 30 percent on average that's seven percent a year our water bills our sewer bills our insurance costs they go along the same lines it just keeps on increasing our building will soon need a new roof repointing and window replacements I've learned how to repair various things by watching do-it-yourself videos to cut down on my expenses because I can't afford to have professionals come out there to fix every little thing We've never put in an MCI or an IAI, but what I fear is the rising expenses will ultimately prove to be too much for hold on to, to hold on to the building that has been in our family for the last 45 years. I and everyone in this room recognize that New York City is expensive, very expensive, and is getting more expensive by the day. I've been here all my life. I hopefully will continue to be here for decades to come. I consider my tenants my extended family, and wish nothing but the best for them. I've known a majority of them my entire life, but if we're forced to sell the building because we can no longer afford to maintain it, whomever buys it will not have the tenant's best interest in mind, but rather a financial one. Thank Please you. help us avoid that. Before I leave, I just want to say the majority of landlords are not monsters out of a horror movie, but they're human beings with families. We need a fair rent increase for both sides, or the city needs to reduce or reform property taxes so we can all live and thrive in this amazing city. Thank you for your time and cooperation. Thank you. I have Clara Perez-Joseph to be followed by uh, Fred Fumafredo. Ms. Perez-Joseph? OK. Um, I have Fred Fumafredo to be followed by Alan Podheiser. My name is Fred Fumafredo. I am an owner of a 12-family brownstone. I inherited this building from my parents. 
I was 13 years old when my father passed away. I've been running my building, helping my mom ever since. Now my mom is gone for 12 years, and I'm alone now taking care of my building and my siblings. I was born into this business, but unfortunately it's been a hard road, and it just has never been profitable. It's all about being a slave to a building, working hard, and not getting anywhere. You take five steps forward and, stem, and ten steps backwards. The expense around my building has increased dramatically, but my rents do not. All my profit, which is very small, goes right back into, me, in, into maintaining my building. A little, if any, I can use for myself. For example, one and a half years ago, my taxes were $20,000. A year and a half later, $37,000. I tried to greet them, but to no, to no avail. My building has been a big struggle for a big struggle for the last 55 years. Sometimes I wonder, why don't I sell and leave? But I gave my entire life to this building. I take care of all my tenants. Unfortunately, my tenants abuse my apartments when they leave and have to spend a lot of money to repair them. It never ends. The tenants always use their, secur their security deposit for the last month's rent, leaving me absorbing all the expenses for damages, and there's always damages. I pay for heat and hot water. When I get my water bill, it's sky high. I go knocking on doors and find out that, that, that their toilets are running nonstop. They ask them, why don't you let me know um, so I can save money on the bill. I live right in the building with my tenants, and they, can, and they can easily reach me. They all have my number to call me. They all have preferential rents. They're always crying to me about rents. I get a one-bedroom, $1,375, a two-bedroom, $1,600. Finally, when my taxes soared at $37,000, I was forced to raise the rents. I raised the rents only a few dollars, and they still have a puss on their face. It costs a lot of money to, to, to do repairs. If I wasn't a handy guy, I would have lost my building a long time ago. When, when my tenants want more heat, I give them more heat. But then when I go outside, I see their windows wide open in the middle of winter. Thank you. Do you want to wrap up? Yeah, all right. Uh, that's it. All right. All right, that's it then. All right, thank Thanks you for your testimony. I have uh, Alan Podheiser, and then I have Thomas Casper. Thank you for the, in letting me speak. Alan Podheiser from the Brightwater Tower Tenants Association in Coney Island. I will deal only with the issue. Taxes, et cetera, are not part of this hearing and should not be dealt with. Thank you again. The increase, there should be no increase. The majority, the heavy majority of rent stabilized apartments, despite what you read in some newspapers, are ma managed, uh, inhabited by senior citizens on fixed incomes. There's, their incomes are fixed, but their expenses go up, medical bills go up, the medical expenses go up. Social Security is not increased at, to increase. Food goes up. They have been the backbone of our society, the teachers, Retired teachers, retired government officials, etc. They should be treated fairly. If you want to see, in fact, you should come to these buildings because you look around, how few people are here. Senior citizens cannot come down to these hearings. You should be able to come to these buildings that are rent stabilized and talk to the tenants, see how they're living. There are two, I would just make a very quick remark. I was reading the newspapers by some of the landlord advocates saying that anybody can live in a rent-stabilized apartment. No, you have to be there before a certain year to be there. And yes, there are children who can come in, but they have to be there for two years before in order to get the apartment. And I just read in the newspapers yesterday that the average age of rent-stabilized tenants are 34 years old. How can that be possible? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I have Thomas Casper next, and then Dennis Riddle. You could have saved a lot of effort for your staff to determine the minimum cost to maintain an apartment, maintain an apartment in New York City. Just look at the mayor's official tax returns for properties he already owns free and clear. In 2017, his costs were $2,426 per apartment. In 2018, his claim costs were $2,277 each, claiming he lost $873 on his building in 2018. His cheapest apartment is $1,900, while he's collecting $4,500 for his former apartment on the ground floor. I'm sure he did not factor in some of my personal expenses, like a squatter that's been there for three years. 
tenants are trying to pretend they are paying thousands of dollars a month in rent. They never say a real amount. It always is some contorted number equal to another nonsensical invention. It's kind of like watching a science fiction movie where they trade in credits or gold press latinum or something silly. I want to see a canceled check from tenants above the amount the amount the mayor rents for. That's the minimum cost. If Jaman I want to know what Jumanji Williams is charging for his illegal apartments. In 30 years, I nor anyone I'm associated with has ever evicted a tenant over a renewal rent increase amount. It's professional squatters who hook themselves in and just stop paying their rent entirely. Spoiled millennials who think the landlord is mommy and daddy. Women who think dating unemployed whack jobs is fun. And then daddy landlord will clean up the mess. F follow our great mayor who does not follow the rent stabilization laws. Since few tenants are apparently paying under the mayor's bare bones, let's do an extra 10% on people paying $1,900 or less. Thank you. Thank you. And stop. Good Shut time, your good. big mouth. Good. I didn't good. interrupt good. anybody good. else. So that it's called freedom of speech and the First Amendment right. And you disrespectful. You a problem. You a problem. You a problem. Yes. You're a problem. Your mother. So we have a, a long, a, we have a lot of people here tonight, and I want to hear as much. We all want to hear as much testimony as possible. So uh, let's let's focus on civility and uh, getting through the getting through the. But tell them don't be discriminatory, because if I feel yeah, it's discriminatory, yeah. it's going to be a problem. Yeah. How dare you? Yeah. So you I, picked out, you singled out people. Let me let, let me just say that. Um, uh, some people came in and they didn't register at the desk, or I think people may have not registered at the desk. So if you do want to speak, uh, make sure that you've registered at the desk. There's RGB staff uh, at the top. Check in if you pre -registered. And if you pre-registered, uh, you should check in too so that we know you're here. Acaban de llegar, solo para hacer un anuncio de que acaban de llegar muchas personas que puede que no se hayan registrado en la mesa del frente o puede que se hayan pre-registrado. Si quieren hablar, dar su testimonio y no se han registrado, por favor acérquense a la mesa del frente y allá se pueden registrar. Uh, I have, uh, let me just read out a few names so we know who's on our list. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I have Dennis Riddle, and then I have Denise Miraman, and then I have Catalina Miraman. Um, Mr. Riddle? Uh, about over 10 years ago, I was in a seminar in Albany. Uh, about 10 years ago, in a seminar in Albany, one of the speakers, he was explaining to us how to fund our projects by dipping into at least two different government agencies. And to quote him, their left hand doesn't know what the right is doing. So there was no vital communication between government agencies, and they were taking advantage of it, or teaching us how to do that. Our new owners of our building, our landlord died, and his wife died. So now they have hit us with about three MCI increase requests, and have been the last year or two. In uh, the case of those with government assistance, this increase is being passed on to the government. Well, my thing, or my suggestion is, I think it's like double dipping. The the across the board rent increase should not just be thrown wide open for these people who are already raising rent with these MCIs. Uh, if the Increase needs to be frozen until the smoke clears on the MCI, whatever it takes to control the, the bad players. Uh, these companies, in our case, they bought up several buildings in our neighborhood. The neighborhood's becoming more like a corporate town. It's a dramatic change, and uh, it's not for the better. Pretty appearances and things, it's, uh, it doesn't make people pretty inside. It's different people living there now. 
So I'm suggesting a serious scrutiny <coughs> on who gets an increase that's deemed necessary. Thank you. Thank you. I have Denise Miramon and then I have Catalina Miramon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Denise Maramom. I'm um, 20 years old. Sorry. I'm currently 20 years old and I live in 196 Huron Street. My narrative, like many others, is practically the same or similar, to which is a, a shame. Growing up in unhealthy living conditions shouldn't be a matter to discuss whether it's just or unjust. Having to deal with problematic things like mold, lead, and pest infestations should not, or not even having hot water or proper heating during the winter is what many, us, many of us have to deal with. However, all of these problems as tenants, and as I am part of a, a younger generation, we seek to have justice. We will not tolerate higher rent prices. I know how hard it is for, for as many families like mine to push forward. Many people say that the younger generations are the future to all of us. However, now I ask myself, what is my biggest priority? Getting a job to help my parents pay a rent or to actually lose my apartment because we can't pay a rent and I would jeopardize my, my opportunity to study. Therefore, that's why I also am against the higher price, higher rent prices and zero increase for the rents. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Next, I have Catalina Miraman, uh, followed by Luz Rosero and Ricardo Chauca. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Eh, mi nombre es Catalina Miramón. Y vivo en el 196 de Yurón por 22 años. Good afternoon. My name is Catalina Miramón and I live at 196 Yurón for 22 years. Y quisiera pedirles o exigir que, que por favor ya no den más incrementos a la renta porque lo que yo estoy viendo que mi landor por 22 años Él nunca me ha arreglado nada, nunca me ha dado pintura, piso, nada. Y los, lo más básico en todos los inviernos, yo tengo que sufrir junto con mi familia, que no tenemos ni steam ni agua caliente. I'm here to ask and, or to demand that there are no, that there isn't a rent increase and a hike on the rent this year because for the past 22 years my landlord has not fixed anything has not given me new paint or new floors and for the and during the winter i have to struggle for the basics with my family with no steam and no hot water y lo más triste y cruel que ahora el, el landor me quiere votar después de 22 años estar viviendo ahí me quiere votar nada más porque él dice que yo le debo 10 mil dólares de renta and the saddest thing the most cruel thing is that my landlord now wants to kick me out after living in his building for 22 years because he claims that I owe him ten thousand dollars Y claro, yo sé que eso es mentira. Él lo que está buscando es votarme para poder rentarle a otra persona y cobrarle más de lo que yo le puedo pagar. But that is a lie, and I know that he is only saying that because he, he wants to kick us out so that he can rent the apartment to somebody who can pay higher rent than I can afford. Les pido o les exijo que por favor cero incrementos a los Landor y por favor que nos tomen más en cuenta nosotros como inquilinos. Gracias. I ask you or I demand from you please to establish a 0% increase and to take us more into account as tenants. Thank you. Gracias. I have Luz Rosero uh, to be followed by Ricardo Chauca and uh, Jairo Acosta. Uh, 
así pasa ahí. Ok. Adelante. Buenas noches, mi Buenas nombre noches. es Luis Rosero. Gracias, gracias. Este, para la mesa directiva que está aquí presente hoy día, este, yo estoy aquí hoy día por el cero incremento de la renta. Okay, so good evening, my name is Luz Rosero for all of you present here from the board and I am here to rep I am here for 0% increase on rents. Eh, hoy día estoy por mi comunidad esperando que ustedes nos apoyen en esta lucha porque la comunidad ha sido deslojada de los apartamentos de nuestra comunidad. Tengo amistades que han dejado su apartamento y los, los niños que se van para otro estado o para otro lugar eh, se enferman, el estrés. Y yo me creo que eso eh, la Junta Directiva debe de tomar muy en cuenta todos esos problemas que eh, nosotros tenemos en nuestra comunidad. I am here to represent my community in the hopes that you support us in this fight. I know that many I know that many members of my community have left their apartments. Many of my friends have had to leave their apartments and their kids or their or their young ones have had to leave to, to go to different states or sometimes they get sick and they struggle in a lot of different ways and I'm here because I want you all to take more take all of these struggles more into account. Ya es basta de los dueños de casa, de los abusos sobre los nuestros arrendamientos, nuestras personas que viven en los apartamentos, que no las arreglan y que lo que quieren es desalojarlo de su apartamento dándole 20 centavos para que se vayan y dejen los apartamentos. That's enough of the abuses from landlords on towards the tenants that rent their apartments. All they do is charge high rents and not provide any fixes and try to kick people out and offer people to pay them 20 cents in order for them to leave the apartment. Y por último, yo le quiero decir a todos los hiladores que están ahora en estos votos, que se acuerden que nosotros estamos presentes en sus elecciones y que así mismo se acuerden de nosotros y de nuestra comunidad. And I'm here also to remind all the legislators in office, in offices of power today, that we are the people who vote them into power and that they need to represent their communities. Toda la persona que están en este momento y los hiladores que están, que se acuerden que están hoy día arriba y mañana pueden estar ocupando los asientos que nosotros estamos ahorita mismo protestando. Muchísimas gracias. So all the people here, all the people here are are here for a cause and all the legislators need to remember that the high places that they sit in today can one day change and they can be sitting in our seats uh, going through the same struggles that we are going through right now. Thank you. Thank you. I have Ricardo Chauca to be followed by Jairo Acosta. Muy buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Jairo Acosta. Oh, sí. Sí. Muy, muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Jairo Acosta. Soy representante de la organización 1 de aquí de la ciudad de Nueva York. Eh, tengo 27 años tra trabajando aquí en Estados Unidos. Soy dominicano. Y lo que estoy viendo, que es inaudito lo que está pasando con nosotros. Nosotros cuando los legisladores nos necesitan, nos levantamos bien temprano a echar el voto por todos ustedes. Entonces es justo que hoy que los necesitamos, ustedes nos, nos, nos den la espalda. So good evening, my name is Jairo Acosta and I'm here representing the UNO organization in, uh, of New York City. I have lived and worked in the United States for 27 years. I'm Dominican and what is happening to our community right now is unheard of or it's very unfair. Um, when the legislators have needed us, we wake up very early and go out to vote them in. And so I think it's, a, it's extremely unfair that when we, the community, need you all to show up for us, you're not there for us to represent our needs. Quiero Quiero que el 20% se elimine y, y no más en Cihuay. 
¿Usted me entiende? Y además de eso, quiero decirle, yo estoy retirado. Lo que me dan, no me dan para pagar la renta donde yo vivo. Lo que me dan 835 dólares, pago 1200. Yo tengo que pagar, sacar del banco para cubrir la renta. Calculen todo eso. Muchas gracias. Gracias. So I want I want to tell you, I want to demand a 20% rollback and eliminate MCIs. I'm retired, and the income that I make is not enough for me to pay rent. I make $835 a month, and my rent is $1,200. So you do the math. I have to go to the bank every every month to take more money out than I, than I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, is Ricardo Chauca here? Is Ricardo Chauca here? Yeah, okay, so then I have uh, Linda Escobar, Camille Sosa, uh, Lucia Lopez. Linda? Linda Escobar? Good evening. My name, evening. Is, Linda, oh, my name is Linda Escobar. I'm a single, single parent and a resident of Sunset Park for 35 years. I'm here today to talk to you about the proposed rent uh, increases and, negative, and the negative impact that it would have on many people that live in Sunset in the Sunset Park community. I live in, on a fixed income and I cannot afford an increase as I already pay over 50% of my income on rent. We as residents of Sunset Park are being displaced in large numbers by rising rents. My family has been personally affected by this increase um, and minimal affordable housing. My daughter and her family um, were displaced. They had to live in a shelter for two years because they couldn't afford the rent. And finally, when they got out, they had to go to Staten Island because they no longer could afford to live in Sunset Park. So I would like you to consider not raising the percentage because it's already hard enough for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I have Camille Sosa and then Lucia Lopez to be followed by Jara Ojeda Huertero. Hello, my name is Camille Sosa. I am 12 years old. My parents are active members of Neighbors Helping Neighbors, an organization in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. I am here today to talk about this year's rent increases and how is these increasing increases affecting me and my family. As it is, my parents are working very hard to pay the rent and other bills and everyday needs. My sister and I cannot spend too much time with my parents because they're not there for us. Most of the kids are having hard time and it is very hard to communicate with their parents. Sometimes I wonder why children get involved in gangs and other types of problems. And I think is the lack of quality time with their parents. Their parents don't have time to check homework or have conversations with us. My dad gets home from work so tired, so by the time he finished dinner, he has to go to sleep for his next day journey. It breaks my heart to see him with no energy left to take me and my sister to the park. I'm asking very respectfully to take consideration the ch of the children of New York City and help by not making increases this year on the rent so my parents can't can spend time with us and at the same time parents with their children. Thank you members of the board for listening. I know you are gonna going to take us the kids before making a decision that will affect families and our future. Thank you. Um, let, me, let me just read let me just read a few names and then I'll make a brief announcement. Uh, Lucia Lopez, Jared Ojeda Hortero, uh, Clara Perez Joseph, and Empress Bay. Um, and I just want to say, if someone um, needs uh, an interpreter, uh, let us know, and we'll make sure that they join you. Eh, el anuncio que acaban de hacer es que si cualquiera de ustedes que va a testificar necesita un intérprete, solo nos dejen saber y nos aseguraremos de que esté presente. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Lucía López. Vivo en el 484 de la calle 60, apartamento 2R, Sonsenpar. 
Oh, okay. Soy miembro, soy miembro activo de vecinos ayudando a vecinos. Yo tengo, yo vengo aquí para pedirles que no aumenten más la renta. En el presente tiempo los empleos son muy escasos. Tenemos que trabajar en dos lugares para poder sobrevivir con el, el, el alto costo de la vivienda. Good evening, my name is Lucia Lopez and I live at 484 uh, 60th Street, apartment 2R in Sunset Park. I'm an active member of Neighbors Helping Neighbors. I come here to ask you to not increase the rents any longer. In the current time, employment is very scar scarce and we often have to work at two different places in order to be able to cover In, or, in order to survive with the high cost of living. Yo soy padre y madre para mis hijos. No, por eso que trabajo bien duro para poder pagar los estudios de mis hijos y con el alto costo, el dinero no me alcanza. Okay. Ya, aquí no me alcanza. I am a mother and a father to my children, and that's why I work really hard in order to pay the, my children's studies. But with the high cost, the, I, I cannot afford it, and the money is not enough. ¿Qué vamos a hacer con más aumento de renta? Yo soy una de muchos inquilinos en este estado. Hay muchos más inquilinos en el problema. Nuestro ambiente está transformándose no para bien. What are we going to do with a higher rent with a rent increase? I am one of many tenants in this state. There are many tenants with the same problem. Our environment is changing, but not for the better. Si eso continúa, ¿dónde vamos? a ir a vivir decentemente. If this continues, where are we going to go to live decently? Y mi apartamento, acuérdense que yo he venido a seguirlos a ustedes. Mi apartamento fue demolido el 2014 hasta el son de hora. Todavía tengo problemas. El agua caliente se va y viene, se va y viene. HCR ha hecho un buen trabajo gracias a ellos. Ellos le dieron una multa al dueño el día domingo. Gracias. Gracias. And so remember, I have come here and I have followed you all. My apartment was demolished in 2014 and I still have problems from that. The hot water comes and goes. Thankfully, HCR has finally done a good job and they find the owner this past Sunday. Thank you. I have Harat Ojeda Huertero, uh, followed by Clara Perez Joseph and Empress Bay. Hello, my name is Jared Ojeda Huertero. I am a member of the Fifth Avenue Committee and I have lived in an apartment board in Kensington and Borough Park for over 18 years. I ask you to freeze the rent, or better yet, decrease it, decrease it because salary because of the salary, and many of these apartments aren't worth their weight in gold due to many reasons. One of them being that the apartment I live in has many construction things lying around all over the apartment. There's mold growing in the bathroom and other highly unsanitary conditions. The landlords in these apartments also harass their tenants. Um, also, I'm the second person in my family going to college, but thankfully I can rely on my parents to give me temporary shelter when I graduate. However, due to the fact that many students acquire so much debt if they haven't filed for FAFSA or if they aren't, are not eligible for FAFSA, uh, they might have a really hard time uh, living out, uh, fresh out of college. Many elderly people here aren't fighting for themselves. They're fighting for, for daughters, uh, sons, and grandchildren to be successful in New York. Thank you for hearing my testimony. Jared. Thank you. 
I have Clara Perez Joseph, followed by Empress Bay and Frederick DeBoer. Good evening, members of the board. I'm a tenant, a leader with um, Neighbors Helping Neighbors and also Inquilinos Unidos. I've lived in a rent-stabilized apartment for many years and raised my children there. I'm here to ask that you do not increase the rent. You've already heard all the breaches of warranty of habitability, so I'm not going to go to that. I see some new faces. So a couple of years ago, the board voted a rent freeze for us, and that was the right and just decision. RSA sued the board, and it went to the Supreme Court, and the judge validated the board's decision and gave them the green light. And the following year, we got a rent increase. Go figure. Everything went awry. Right now, you see a lot of these people here, they're humble people, and they're hardworking people, and they should not have to compromise their um, rent or their food budget or their medical bills. You have uh, college graduates, not millennials that depend on mommy and daddy. I have a daughter that got, worked hard for two master degrees, and but she lost her apartment to a preferential rent lease. So there are a lot of college graduates with a lot of debt and working, but it's entry level salaries. So we have to take them into consideration. We have senior citizens that don't qualify for scree by a hair. They can't qualify by hair, and they're also suffering. I'm asking you, you know, the Declaration of Independence says, some of you have heard this before, that we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I want you to explain to me, how can we pursue happiness when we don't even have a place to live? In my neighborhood, we have rent-stabilized tenants that were displaced into a shelter that was built across the street from my house. It should be the other way around. Do the right thing, please. Right. Don't increase our rents. Thank you. I have Empress Bay, Frederick DeBoer, and Gladys um, Puglia. Thank you. How you doing? I speak Thank English, you. but I know that there are people here that speak Spanish, so I have requested that the translator translate what I have to say to the individuals that speak Spanish. Buenas noches. Eh, yo hablo inglés, pero sé que hay personas aquí que solo hablan español, entonces le he pedido al intérprete que interprete lo que voy a decir para que entiendan todas. My name is Autumn. Well, good evening and peace to all the members on the panel board and to all of you in attendance. Thank you for coming. I am Empress Hadia Bay. Excuse me, I need to, to look at these people because you guys are just making a decision, but I want to talk to them. I'm Empress Hadia Bay, CEO of Lyrics Playhouse Publishing and Management, heiress to Sacred Heart Mission, a non-for-profit non-governmental organization started by my great-grandfather Charles Jones in 1972. I'm here today to speak to all the individuals in attendance and their collective rights. I'm an attractionist individual raised in New York and the central Brooklyn areas. The main thing that affects anyone from the individual to the small business owner is the rent here in New York City. In my area, I'm seeing families and small businesses pushed out by ever-increasing rents that in a few years, meaning you, your friends, and your family members will not be able to afford to stay in their homes. Mm -hmm. Buenas noches eh, y paz a todas las personas y a todos los miembros del panel y a todas las personas que están en asistencia. Yo soy Empress Hadia Bay, eh, la CEO, la presidenta de Lyrics Playhouse Publishing y de manage, Management and Harris to Sacred Hearts Mission, una organización no, guberma, no gubernamental sin ánimo de lucro que fue iniciada por mi bisabuelo Charles Jones. Estoy aquí el día de hoy para hablar con todos los individuos, individuos presentes y su derecho colectivo. Yo soy una individua autóctona criada en la ciudad de Nueva York, en el área central de Brooklyn. La cosa, la cosa principal o lo principal que afecta a cualquier persona en la ciudad de Nueva York y que los diferencia 
de los dueños de pequeños negocios es la renta aquí en la ciudad de Nueva York. En mi área yo estoy viendo familias y negocios pequeños que están siendo expulsados por unas rentas que cada vez van en aumento y que en pocos años quiere decir ustedes y sus amistades y sus familias no van a poder pagar para quedarse en sus hogares. I respectfully request for you guys to consider another rent freeze because I am a tenant of one of the management companies that gains from this increase. They have illegally ha they have illegally harassed my family and of course there's an incentive for them to do so. This will put an even further strain on, stu on struggling families. The number of homeless women and children are ridiculous. The shelter system is already at capacity. It is known to me by way of experience that these big business landlords will commit perjury. They will tamper with the lives of children. They will physically assault them and cause emotional trauma. They have done this to me and my children. Take it from a homeschooling business owner that has lost everything due to the greed of one of the biggest predators of them all, all year management. All of these landlords care about is money, no matter who it comes from or who they have to harm to get it. Will you step in and care for these children? The choice is yours. And to my brothers and sisters here in solidarity, this is not where it ends. This is just the beginning. I have a case pending in the United States District Court, and I'm going to take this and everybody here, and I'm going to put it in front of a judge because this is always supposed to be a judicial decision. This is never supposed to be in the hands of somebody who cares to gain. Thank you. Ok, yo respetuosamente les pido que consideren, en vez de aumentar la renta, que consideren nuevamente un una congelación de la renta. Eh, yo soy una inquilina de una de las compañías de manejo que se beneficiaría con un aumento de renta. Ellos legalmente han acosado a mí, me han acosado a mí y a mi familia. Y claro que reciben un incentivo para continuar haciéndolo. Esto... Va, pon, esto continuará poniendo más eh, dificultades en las familias que de por sí ya están eh, luchando o teniendo dificultades. El número de personas, el número de mujeres y de niños desamparados en la ciudad de Nueva York sin hogar es ridículo. El sistema de albergues ya está a su límite. Es yo conozco por mi propia experiencia de que estos negocios grandes y de que estos landlords de negocios grandes o caseros de negocios grandes cometerán perjurio, van a eh, afectar directamente la vida de los niños y las niñas a través de asalto físico, a través de trauma emocional. Ellos lo han utilizado eh, contra mí. Ellos han utilizado los, los servicios de cuidado infantil para intentar intimidar a las familias a que, no, a que se muden. Y yo sé que muchas mujeres han tenido que lidiar con esto también. Una mujer, Vanessa Lewis, perdió su vida. Y tómenlo de mí, que soy una... Que, Ah, que soy una dueña de negocios que eh, educa a sus hijos en casa y yo perdí todo como resultado de esta avaricia, de la avaricia de uno de los más grandes eh, predadores o caseros predadores en la ciudad de Nueva York, que es de All Year Management. Estos landlords solamente les importa su dinero, no importa de dónde venga ni de quién venga y están dispuestos a causar daño para, con para conseguirlo. Ustedes, ustedes, eh, ¿será que van a, van a demostrar que les importan las familias y los niños? ¿O van, a, ¿O van a ser añadidos a la lista de los que defienden a las violaciones constitucionales de este país? Y a ustedes aquí presentes, les dejo saber... Ah, les dejo saber, a la, la opción es suya. Y a ustedes, hermanas y hermanos en solidaridad, aquí presentes, les digo que este no es el fin, este solo es el comienzo. Yo voy a agregar esta situación y esta, esta demanda en frente de mi caso, o incluyéndola en mi caso, 
eh, tengo un caso ahora mismo pendiente en la corte y voy a traer esta conversación enfrente a la corte porque esto debe ser decidido siempre eh, por un juez y no por personas que están eh, que tienen la posibilidad de beneficiarse de esto. Gracias. Thank you. I have Patrick Tabor and Gladys Puglia. Being here for your voice and your testimony, it's very much appreciated. I'm here because at the end of the day, everybody here has children, and they are using ACS and things like that to push people, grandchildren, and, and uh, nieces and nephews, and they're using children's services. They're using them against the families. It is not just them taking them to court. If they can't get you out through court, they're going to take your kids and then get you out. Because once your kids are gone, you're gone too. So, I, and that's why I said what I said to this gentleman earlier. Because at the end of the day, I'm not even going to sit here and hold you. I'm going to go home. Because if I stay here any longer, I'm going to get pissed off. Because all these people here know they don't got to worry about that. They probably own what they have already. But everybody sitting here is the ones who got to worry about that. I saw somebody die in my building because of this. She's dead now, and y'all not helping us. So if you don't do something, United States District Court Judge Pamela K. Chen is going to handle it. And I'm not playing. Listen, everybody here that see Miss Bay, I'm dead serious. This is not going to stop here today. Because my children spent 40 days in foster care for no reason whatsoever from a greedy landlord. And that's on God. So y'all better do the right thing. Because if you don't, I got all your names. And it's already 156. I don't mind going to 175. All right, uh, Mr. DeBoer. Welcome. Uh, hi, uh, my name is uh, Frederick Bohr. I am a rent stabilized tenant in Lefferts Gardens here in Brooklyn, uh, and I'm a member of the Metropolitan Council on Housing. Um, every year I get up here and I say about the same thing because the facts don't really change. Here's a fact, for the 13th consecutive year, the net operating income of uh, landlords who own rent stabilized housing has increased. Yeah. So for the 13th straight year, the increase in their income exceeds the inc uh, increase in their costs. So the question becomes, why on earth would there be any increase in the rent during a housing crisis when we already know that the landlords are making more money than they made last year and the year before that 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 and the year before that, and the year before that, 13 years straight, okay? Now, if individual landlords uh, can't uh, make ends meet, they have a hardship exemption, right? If they're not making 5% profit, they can open their books and they can prove that their hardship and they get an exemption. Uh, these tenants behind me, when we can't pay our rent, we don't have a hardship exemption. That does not exist for us, okay? Um, in New York City, uh, Almost half of all of our tenants are considered legally rent burdened. A quarter of all of our tenants spend more than 50% of their income on rent, including me. Okay. Uh, tonight, 60,000 people are going to sleep in homeless shelters in the richest city, in the richest country in the world. I ask you to do your part in preventing this and trying to solve this immense housing crisis by voting for the smallest increase possible. Thank you. Thank you. Gladys Puglia? I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Puglia, uh -huh. Puglia, I'm also, I think, an interpreter. Um, and uh, if you haven't signed up but you would like to speak, please uh, sign up with the RGB staff in the lobby. Thank you. And even if you've pre-registered to also uh, make sure you've signed up so we know you're here. Thank you. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches a todos también. Buenas um, buenas noches and greetings to everyone. No, 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 the, about the signing up in the lobby. Sí, por favor se inscriben a la entrada si quieren dar su testimonio si no lo han hecho todavía. Como dijo el señor que estaba aquí ahorita. Yo también tengo 20 años viniendo a dar mi testimonio y a decir, ya basta. Estamos, ya no sabemos qué hacer. 
he criado a mis hijos y no han podido obtener un apartamento porque no pueden pagar la renta. Han regresado a mi apartamento. Y ahora mi apartamento está demasiado alta la renta. So, quiero saber qué quieren de nosotros para que ustedes dejen de subir la renta. Um, like the gentleman said earlier, I have been coming here for 20 years as well, and it's enough with these increases. What are we supposed to do? What do you want us to do? Uh, I, I, am, I have my children, and I raise my children in my apartment, and um, they themselves can't go out and rent their own apartments because they can't pay the rent. They've returned to live with me. Um, so what, are, what do you all want us to do? Ahorita mismo ya casi me sacan de mi apartamento. El mes pasado estuve en corte. Porque el lo dice porque no pago mi renta. Pero yo, ¿por qué le tengo que pagar todos los meses si no me da los servicios que necesito? En la calefacción en el, en el invierno es como rezar y pedir un milagro. El agua caliente es demasiada caliente y a veces el agua fría se va. Las ventanas no sirven. Las puertas no sirven. Tenemos demasiadas cucarachas. Estamos infestados y él ya no manda un exterminador. So, dígame, ¿qué hago? So I'm almost getting kicked out of my apartment um, because my landlord says that I'm not paying for rent. But why am I going to pay for rent if I don't get the basic services that I need? Why should I pay for that? Um, the heat, we don't have heat, basically, and it's like we have to pray for a miracle each time that we need heat. And um, the hot water is way too hot. The windows don't work. The doors don't work. And our, our buildings and our apartments are f uh, infested with cockroaches, and our landlord doesn't send an exterminator anymore. Solo quiero pedir que hagan conciencia, que piensen que hay mucha gente así mismo como yo y hay mucha gente que está en la calle ya si al próximo año usted no me ve aquí es porque ya fui ya fui votada de mi apartamento y espero que no porque como dije voy a seguir luchando voy a seguir viniendo voy a seguir que ustedes escuchen mi voz quieran o no aquí voy a estar gracias gracias I hope that you really are aware of what um, you all, um, about your decision. A lot of people are already out in the street. If you all don't see me here next year, it's because I got kicked out of my apartment. And I'm going to keep fighting, and I'm going to keep making sure that my voice gets heard. Thank you.